Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's so good to be back. I've been away over the summer and it's pretty nice. I've been doing this. But back back to England now, I'm back to making videos and I'm so excited. I've got a list, a big long list here of all the videos I want to make for you guys. So today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on how to make your writing spooky and scary. And this is just in time because we are just about a month or so before Halloween. So you've got time to practice these techniques and make some really spooky stories. So for anyone who doesn't know me, my name's Amy and I'm from Tuition Up and I teach live online lessons. I've got group lessons for children who are in year six doing their SATs. I do lessons for home educated people as well. And um, anyone who's world schooling, my one-to-one -one lessons are pretty full, um, but I do have spaces in group. So let's start then with today's lesson. By the end of today's lesson, you're going to know how to scare your reader. And you probably will have written a couple of um, effective scary sentences. So linked in with spooky writing is suspense writing. And suspense writing is that kind of tense, kind of uneasy feeling you get when you're watching a film and you're kind of on the edge of your seat or you're reading a book and you just kind of got to go on to that next chapter. You just don't know what's going to happen next. And that's the author giving a slow release of information just to keep you hanging on that string and wanting to know what happens next. Okay, so questions. Which sentence do you think has got more suspense? The scary monster came up the stairs or it crept up the stairs? What do you think? You can type in the comments and let me know what you think. So it is an empty word. And this kind of word, we don't really know what it is. It plays on your imagination. It leaves you wondering what it can be. It's a, it's a suspense technique. It's kind of a controlled release of information by the author. And they're really good to use these empty words if you want to scare your reader. So let's have a little look at some of them now. There was somebody somewhere, somewhere outside, something was lurking. No one's another one. Nowhere, nobody. A silhouette, a shadow, it. So we've got this kind of question mark over what this could be. We don't know. The author is releasing this information slowly to you and it's a great technique to use. There was an object, there was a figure. I don't know what it is. I just saw an outline, just a glimpse of it. I had a premonition, a feeling that something was going to happen. Have a look at this one then. Can you spot which is the most effective suspense sentence? Which one do you think? You can say sentence one, two, three or four and you can drop it in the comments. Let's use this picture to help us scare our reader. So what could we do with this picture with these woods? Well, we could name it. We could name the woods a kind of spooky name. Give it a name. Dead woods would do. And um, we can add in some empty words. Um, there it stood. There was a shadow. This kind of thing. Um, we could think very carefully about when we set it. So we could set it at nighttime, kind of twilight, dusk. There's kind of like more of a kind of um, spooky feeling around these kind of times of day. Also, thinking about this, using something called pathetic fallacy, um, which is a posh way of saying the author is using the weather to set the mood. So we could have stormy weather. We could have like thunder rumbling in the distance, kind of dark grey clouds. Yeah, this is all kind of spooky stuff. Next one is the sounds that you're going to hear. Often when children write, um, they forget to think about what you can hear because they're busy writing down what you can see and explaining all that. The sounds are really, really crucial, especially for something that's scary. You know, all of these kind of barks, screams, even silence can be quite spooky. So don't forget about that. Having something faulty or broken, so something flickering, maybe your battery's running out, uh, phone's got no signal, this kind of thing. Having something broken is also a, a good suspense and kind of spooky technique. Varying your sentences, having some really long descriptive ones, but then having some shorter ones kind of add to that rhythm of suspense. Using show not tell, so rather than saying your character is afraid, you're going to say um, they have goosebumps, the hairs on the back of their neck stand up and end, this kind of thing. All spooky techniques. And don't forget about questions. Where's the path? Which way was home? Why had I left my map back at the house? This kind of thing. These are all really good. 
If these have been helpful and you've learned something new today, you might want to think about joining my classes. I run a free lesson every Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning and I have group lessons in the evening time and also during the day. There are links in the comments below that can help you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.